Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. Uh, got a little update on the Cub. I didn't really accomplish much on it this weekend, other than I did. Last time I talked about this thing, the uh, actuator it um, kind of freaked out and fully extended forward and broke my little part there. And so the next morning I came out here, I had it all disconnected, like you see it now. You know, the actuator is not actually hooked on anything, so I had disconnected. Um, but I had all the wiring together and I had my little steering shaft in there and I just turned it on, just put 12 volts to the DC DC and the Arduino and all that stuff, turned it on and nothing happened. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> maybe it only works, uh, if you have the computer connected and maybe that's a thing you can fix in software. It turns left when I want it to turn right. That's probably something you can fix in software. And, um, it is really, really jumpy and needs to be much more progressive. That's probably also something you can fix in software, but you know what? I'm over it. I'm over it. Uh, I know lots of people use Arduino and it's open source and everybody loves it. And it's just simple C plus plus programming and you know, anybody can learn how to do it, but I don't care. I'm done with it. I've, I've, I'm, I'm over it. So this, this whole actuator thing is, is Going up on the shelf, I'll do. I'll use it for something else. It's a bummer. It's four hundred bucks for that, and about seventeen Arduinos and motor controllers and DC DCs I had to buy. Uh, you know, so I'm out all that money at least for the moment. I'll I'll use it for something some other time down the road, but uh, I'm over it for this. So, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get that doggone actuator out of there. And this is uh, we introduced this kind of last year. This is my last video. This is my um, little cross link that go, it goes underneath goes underneath that and that's what turns it that's where my taper bearings are so what i'm going to do this is a two and a half inch uh out od right there so i'm going to get a a thin gear a thin sprocket uh probably like a 40 tooth or so something that is um dimensionally uh so the center line to out here is you know short enough that it won't interfere with my little cross link here or my little push rod there so if the push rod's sitting here, I'll get a, a sprocket that's like less than nine inches. And you can you can vary the tooth um the size of the the chain. Uh if you say you want 40 teeth and you want a, a nine inch versus a 12 inch, you just get a, a chain that has narrower length. So it's pretty simple to do that. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get a little thing and I'm gonna make sure that's in uh you know, machine the inside of it out and uh preferably press it on here. And then make sure that it's as square as I can get it with the bottom of this. This is square, so as long as that's square. And then uh, just kind of, you know, weld it onto this part. And then I'll probably make a different one of these. But maybe instead of this is only two inches, I'll maybe make it four inches wide. And then um, I will get, I will get, I will get. Let me show you what I will get. I will get. Yeah, I'll get a, a little like 10 or this is 11 tooth that'll work get 11 tooth sprocket and just put it um this won't be here anymore and put it there and run a shaft through it probably through tapered bearings or they could probably just be roller bearings a, a pair of roller bearings and uh then that'll just come up to it through a drive shaft and that'll just be um, splined or keyed or whatever into a drive shaft going to a steering arm to a steering wheel and it'll just be mechanical and it'll be a chain and i'll machine it you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make it such that the, the chain itself stays tight. So I don't, um, I'm not, I don't need to worry too much about there being slack in the chain and having the chain be adjustable. It'll just be, um, machined correctly to the correct tolerance so that it's, you know, that it's where it's supposed to be. And it's, uh, not going to be under a whole lot of stress, maybe some, but not too bad. And it'll just be mechanical and it'll probably be really hard to turn, which is fine because I got this guy. This is a, Electric power assist, sir, um, I guess you call it servo. Electric power assist out of a Nissan Versa. So I've got one of these on my Jeep. And basically what happens is this is where the steering input from the steering wheel comes in. And then there's a little torque sensor in here. And as soon as you turn this, uh, since there's resistance on the output, I got that backwards. So you come, it comes in here. And when you turn this, since there's resistance on the output, um, there's like a sensor. It's think of it as like a little rubber bushing in there so that this part sort of smooshes that little rubber bushing. And there's a sensor in here that senses that differential. And when that happens, it kicks on this motor 
and that motor is just has like a screw just like a, a worm gear in there and uh it just power assists your steering and to like a great deal a lot and it's very effective and if this thing would ever not work this still turns you can still you know you can still turn this the steering gear through with, with it so um you know yeah see so like that so even if this thing's not on you can still you still have steering um so it's you know automatically fail safe if the electronic go it'd just be a little bit harder and uh, yeah so that and what that allows me to do since that whole situation will be much stronger uh i can i can still entertain the idea of putting a front end loader on this with the actuator system uh you know let's say i had a, a four foot wide blade up there or something and i hit uh i was shoveling some snow i don't know and i went into a snow bank that was uh heavy you know like a and and it put a whole lot of torque on the right side of the of the whole frame well that torque gets transmitted through the pivot here and gets directly transmitted into this actuator and it can probably take it that can actually take a lot of static load i don't know what kind of shock load it can take but it can take a lot of static yeah so like i said before i was rudely interrupted by a dead battery it's going to die here pretty soon again but like i was saying the actuator can take you know several thousand pounds of static load but i don't know what kind of shock loads it can take uh maybe it can take a lot maybe it can take a lot once and it can you know it's just not a good design for the for what i want so it's done it's over i'm gonna make it mechanical because that's how it should have been from the beginning um but you know i i've spent some money on this stuff it's a 400 hundred dollar actuator and i spent hundreds of dollars on our Twino, arduinos and motor controllers and stuff but uh all that stuff will get used at some point in time. So it's not a complete waste and doing it was fun and, you know, figuring out all this stuff was fun. And, you know, I haven't figured this out yet. So this is going to inevitably have its own issues, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for fun. I'm doing this to keep my brain exercised and active, you know, so, uh, I don't need this to get to work and I don't even need it to cut my grass. I don't need it to do anything. Um, if I needed a replacement for my existing lawn tractor, I could have just taken one of these two-wheel drive tractors and just converted it and been done with it. And But, you know, this is a, you know, it's an exercise and it's an exercise and just learning stuff and fabricating and all that stuff. And that's the kind of stuff I like doing. So with that, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.